hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Thank you for uh, joining us for one of our daily Design Innovation Month webcasts. Uh, my name is Chris Dubuque. I've been hosting these throughout the month. But today, I actually get to give one of the presentations. So uh, before I get into the content, I would like to just touch on a few of our housekeeping items. First and foremost, this webcast is being recorded and it will be uploaded to the CATI YouTube channel in a few days. I'm going to go ahead and send that link out through the, uh, the WebEx chat here. Uh, it does take us again a couple of days to get the video from WebEx and process it and get it uploaded, so we appreciate your uh, patience there. Everything will be organized into a playlist for Design Innovation Month 2019, I believe. Uh, but we've got a ton of content up there. Uh, because we record all of our webcasts, I do have everyone's audio muted. Uh, so please keep yourselves muted. Any background information will be recorded by the WebEx audio system and will be forever part of this video that gets uploaded to uh, YouTube. So I am here to talk a little bit about some sketching tips and tricks. Uh, I've been told that I tend to get a little bit too involved with these things, so I'm going to try really hard to keep it short, sweet, concise, uh, right to the point, not get distracted, anything, uh, anything like that. So uh, even more sketching tips and tricks in SOLIDWORKS. So the agenda. Well, the first thing I'll mention is, uh, yeah, I've, I've presented on this a handful of times, uh, but I'm hopeful that most of these are, are new, that I haven't shown at least recently. Now, I will admit some of what I'm going to show today I have presented in the past in other webcasts, and the reason for that is I just continually get asked or asked those questions over and over and over. So I thought it might be helpful just to touch on a few of those again. Um, nothing that I'm going to show today is, I think, uh, groundbreaking. You know, I hope that most of you know a lot of what I'm going to talk about, but on the same time, uh, I hope you pick up, you know, a tip or trick here that, that is useful. Oops, sorry, I bumped my mouse. Uh, I'll go through what I consider just a couple of best practices. I'm not going to overwhelm you with slides upon slides upon slides. Uh, some keyboard shortcuts, primarily because I will use the keyboard shortcuts when I drive SOLIDWORKS. So I just want to mention what's popping up on the screen and where it came from. And then I'll go through just a couple of uh, tips when you're sketching to add some relations in there, some dimensioning tips, and really I'm going to try to show some of the maybe not standard dimensions things that maybe you haven't seen in SOLIDWORKS or maybe you forgot that you could actually do those inside of SOLIDWORKS. And then I'll wrap up with a couple of sketch edit editing uh, tips, trying to showcase some of my uh, favorite, if you want to call them that, sketching commands inside of SOLIDWORKS, some tools that I find quite useful. And with all of that, let's talk a little bit about some of these best practices. Uh, first and foremost, I mean, this is true for everything in SOLIDWORKS. Always think about and try to maintain your design intent. Uh, if you're not familiar with that term, you know, design intent is simply your plan on how the model should behave when you make a change to anything. Um, so it's always really good to, to think about design intent. I know from personal experience, I tend to get uh, a little ahead of myself, and if I don't really maintain and think about my design intent, things go sideways in my sketches and my models quite quickly. So from personal experience, you know, slow down, think about your design intent, tends to be a good thing. Add your dimensions and your relations, you know, to the reference planes, to the front top and right planes, however you want to name them. They never change in SOLIDWORKS. They are always a constant. So dimensioning and relating to what you can to those planes is going to, uh, it's going to give you a more stable model. Keep your sketches simple. This is something that I come across uh, quite a bit in, in support. 
very, very complex sketches, hundreds or even several hundred sketch entities and dimensions and relations in there. A couple things happen. Number one, they're a bit confusing to work with, um, hard for someone else to look at a very, very complex sketch and really, again, understand that design intent. Um, but they can also become very slow. Uh, sketches are being solved simultaneously, all those relations and dimensions, and it could be hundreds and several hundreds of dimensions and relations. They're being solved simultaneously. The more you're solving, the slower everything gets. Uh, if you've used SOLIDWORKS for, uh, for a long time, I'm sure you've seen large sketches and see how they can become uh, cumbersome. Another thing is with really, really large sketches, it's, it's easy to overdefine them, cause errors, things like that. So, you know, keep your sketches simple. Definitely a good thing. Leverage construction geometry. I love construction geometry. Use it constantly. Um, I'm going to show you a new option in the trim command a little bit later that they, they being SOLIDWORKS snuck in SOLIDWORKS 2019 that I had no idea was there. Uh, that I think is pretty useful, but leverage construction geometry. It's there to help. It's, it's again, it's one of those types to share your design intent with another user. Fully define your sketches. Very simple. Please do it. It just makes things so much easier to solve and so much easier to understand in a sketch. Uh, obviously, you may not know every single dimension or relation to an initial sketch, so maybe in the, uh, you know, conceptualizing process. You may not dimension or uh, relate all of your sketches, but once that design gets more and more uh, refined, definitely when you're transitioning into making drawings and manufacturing, really should fully define your sketches. And another option, create closed contours. You know, fully, uh, fully close your sketches. I see this one a lot, maybe more with newer users, uh, but the shaded contours option can be a real helper with this. We'll see this in action a little bit later. And rename important sketches. Don't name every sketch unless you would like to, um, but renaming those critical sketches in the tree, again, I think of not only design intent uh, is understanding how the model should change or behave when I change it, but I also kind of think about what if someone else needs to look at my model? Do they have any idea what I was thinking? Uh, and try to help them out as much as I can. So that F2 on the keyboard, nice shortcut key to rename uh, all sketches, relations, uh, features in the tree. So nice little helper there. So getting started, I always like to throw up my little relations cheat sheet. Um, you know, back in the day when I started using SOLIDWORKS, there were no relation callouts. So you had to commit all of this to memory and you eventually get there. But without relation callouts, it was kind of hard to figure out what was what. So just the little icon indicators that you'll see whenever you're creating a sketch and you have the view sketch relations option enabled, blown them up a little bit. That can be uh, sometimes helpful, that's for sure. A few keyboard shortcuts. These are a handful that you will see when I sketch. Uh, the S key, the shortcut toolbar. I might be a little bit overstating saying it's the greatest thing ever, but I really, really like the implementation of the shortcut or the S key inside of SOLIDWORKS, that customizable palette for sketches, parts, assemblies, and drawings. It's quite useful. Uh, the D key brings the confirmation corner right to the mouse, another quite useful one. Uh, the A key to transition automatically from lines to arcs, and that's what you see in that little animation there. Super, super uh, useful whenever you're creating uh, sketches. And last but not least, the control key. Well, you, we use this quite a bit inside of SOLIDWORKS. One, hold down the control key to multi-select sketch entities to add a relationship between them. But also, when you're actively creating a sketch entity, if you hold down the control key, you will turn off the automatic relations and the automatic snapping behavior. So it's kind of a double-purposed command. So a couple of relation tips, and I'm going to keep all these examples super, super short, super, super simple. Um, again, just trying to keep it all concise. Leverage the inference lines, and I'll show that uh, live when I create 
a really simple sketch here. Again, the control key, use that control key to multi-select. I will show you that there is a faster way to add relations between entities. Temporarily turn off those auto relations. Again, I just want to kind of hit that home. That's the control key. And one of my favorite enhancements that they've added uh, in reversing tangents. If you ever accidentally have sketched anything like you see on the screen, um, there's a much easier way to fix it than the old way of delete, blow your sketch up, and, and recreate it. So uh, I've got a lot of windows open, so bear with me while I jump into SolidWorks. And we'll just put a sketch on the front plane. Nothing too complex here. Here's that shortcut toolbar, that S key to uh, help me draw in a couple of entities. And I mentioned use construction geometry. You'll see that I am going to create some sketch, uh, construction geometry, but I didn't do a very good job of creating it. I missed that, that uh, vertical relationship. Here's those inference lines that would allow me to make a perpendicular relationship. I'm going to forego that and make it horizontal here real quick. And let's clean that sketch up with a nice make vertical. Back into the shortcut toolbar, let's create a line right there. And we'll just create a line up at an angle. Again, hit the A key. That will turn in that uh, option to create arcs automatically. Hit the A key again, and you can reverse that direction. Pretty easy to do. Uh, you know, if you accidentally create an arc like this that's inverted, not the end of the world because now we can right click and reverse that end point tangent. So uh, a quite useful option hiding in the right mouse button. And I think that's probably what you'll see a lot of things inside of SOLIDWORKS today is they're all accessible. A lot of them are right mouse button clicks, things like that. You know, let's add in a couple of more, a couple more relations. You know, maybe I just want a horizontal line right to my vertical construction line. And I, you know, Due to my haphazard sketching, I did not add the relationship between the, the arc and the line. So again, you can hold down the control key, multi-select, add that tangent relationship. But the whole reason I'm showing this is to let you know there is a faster way. We can add those relations with one click of the mouse, and that is to select the common endpoint between that line and that arc. The same options are there. So the software will automatically select the adjacent entities and there we can super, super easily add that, uh, that tangent relationship in there. So uh, basic sketch, but a couple of things to think about when you are um, creating your, your geometries. Now I'm going to open up another model, and this is a more realistic example of why the reverse tangent is really, really useful. So this is a 3D sketch that is fully defined. And uh, again, we all know that if we take this arc that has been inverted and we delete it, very, very bad things are going to happen in our sketch as well as our feature manager tree. So this is that right-click reverse endpoint tangent. I think they put this in SOLIDWORKS 2017, a very, very useful operation that gets hidden, gets forgotten about, as well as another thing. Uh, this is a 3D sketch. Let's go ahead and mirror it. Here's kind of a bonus tip that just uh, – that I want to mention here on mirror entities, just window select everything when you're doing a sketch mirror, the mirror about in 2017, 2018, 19, now in 20, you can select reference planes as your mirror plane, right click to select that, exit sketch, you know, roll to the end. Um, example of just a real world scenario on where that reverse uh, tangent endpoint can be very, very useful. So, a couple things to think about there. Let's jump back into PowerPoint and continuing on. So, a couple of dimension tips. Dimensioning circles, I say shift is the key. This is something that I show quite a bit, uh, but every time I talk about it, it's, it seems to be just missed inside of SOLIDWORKS. So, dimensioning to either inner diameters, outer diameters, combination thereof, the shift key is, uh, is what does it there. And now I want to show go through a couple of examples of maybe lesser commonly used dimensions. The arc length dimension. Uh, up until recently, I probably hadn't created one of those for years. A customer needed it, so I thought it would be meant, uh, useful to talk about. Uh, creating angles without lines. 
there we can see this 30 degree angle right there. How do you get that in there? If you don't have all the linear geometry, you can also select three points. I'll show that as well. And these two dimensions, the 45 and the 150 dimensions for that kind of overall width or for revolved features. I was just driving in SOLIDWORKS, building a sketch and I did that. And uh, I kind of took it as common knowledge, but it wasn't, so I want to go over that real quick. And then finally, the path length dimension. It really gets forgotten about in SOLIDWORKS if you need to define and control the perimeter of your sketch, that path length dimension can be useful. So again, we will uh, jump windows here. I might as well. We'll use this sketch that's open right there. It'll work just as good as any. And we'll use the S key. Go ahead and uh, let's just bring up a smart dimension here. And let's show a couple of these real quick. So that arc length dimension, you may not need this very much, but the way that it works, select the two endpoints of the arc, click one, click two, and then click number three, the arc itself. There you can directly control the arc length if you ever need to define that on your SOLIDWORKS sketches. Uh, the angle dimension without any lines, this is a, a neat thing that they've put in the last uh, few years back. But select the entity in question as well as the entity endpoint, and you'll bring up this little, uh, I guess it's not a triad because it's not three-dimensional, but this little quadrant. And I'll select this vertical quadrant arrow right there. That allows you to directly create that angular dimension without needing to create additional construction geometry. Controlling the overall width of a sketch, something that can be sometimes forgotten. Select the entity you are interested in dimensioning and a construction line. This is one of those cases where I say use construction lines, construction geometry, they're super useful. This one example, they are 100% necessary. So we'll select that construction line and just move the mouse to the far side. So it's not a special dimension we need to select, it's just a technique. Uh, a gesture or behavior with the mouse, near side, far side, left click the mouse, and we can go ahead and specify whatever that should be. We'll just round that up to 180. And I could continue to add additional dimensions over and over and over. Um, final dimension I want to create here, this one is a special dimension. So I'll go up to the Smart Dimension pull-down menu and choose the Path Length Dimension. I will admit this is kind of a silly example for a path length dimension, but we'll go ahead and we'll add it in there and just simply select the one or more entities. I guess you wouldn't do it with one entities, the multiple entities you want to create together in a chain. Now I individually selected them. If you have many, many entities, a window is absolutely the way to go, but I do not want those extra construction lines in there. A green checkbox OK, and now there is a path length dimension. And notice that this fully defines my sketch. And maybe I want the combined length of those entities to be 135 millimeters. So a very non-standard way to dimension this sketch, but um, these are a couple of the dimensions that uh, can be useful. Another type of dimension that I want to add real quick, I mentioned it, but I haven't shown it yet, Dimensioning those circles. So very quickly, I will jump into a new sketch. I'm going to use a sketch tool I don't see utilized that much, or at least I don't use it all the time, the sketch or midpoint line. So it starts from a midpoint. You can just drag it out, whatever that length is. Select that length in the pop-up toolbar. We can say make a construction geometry. Shortcut key a second time over to sketch circles. There's one and there's two. And I'm going to pause for a second because I noticed uh, a functionality that popped up that I really wasn't thinking about. And that, I am using SOLIDWORKS 2020. Uh, there's new kind of animations in SOLIDWORKS 2020 for the commands. This makes it a little bit easier to understand uh, what's going on there. I want to make these two circles equal, so I'll just cross, use a crossing window from right to left little shortcut for the crossing selection, we'll make them equal. And now again, shortcut toolbar, 
grab a dimension. And while I add this dimension, I am going to hold down the Shift key on the keyboard. And I mentioned Shift is key. That's what gets it to jump to the inside, to the outside. So I'm still holding down the Shift key. You can see inner, you know, inner tangency, the center point, or the far tangency. So that's kind of the, not really a trick, that's just the functionality within the software. You can always change this after the fact by selecting the dimension, going over to the leaders, and in the far bottom of the property manager, you can see first and second arc conditions. And I'll just cycle through those, and you can see how the dimension changes on the screen. So that's the, the key to create that dimension. Hold down the Shift key. And I want to go through some examples of some just general sketch editing, um, pulling these examples from all over the place. First off, one of my favorite SOLIDWORKS sketch commands, the intersection curve. You can literally intersect anything in a sketch, a reference plane and model faces in a 2D sketch, or surface bodies resulting in a 3D sketch. Um, next example we'll take a look at is this unfortunate twisted loft example, a kind of half round to a rectangle. Things don't work out too well. Um, that's something that can be managed easily with the split entities command, or you can leverage what we call sketch segments. That is another command inside of SOLIDWORKS. And then replace entities. This has been in the software for a number of releases, quite a while now. Um, but I know I forget it. I tend to delete. My sketch blows up. This is a much easier way to, to leverage it. And then I want to talk about the new power trim options with inside of SOLIDWORKS 2019. Uh, we showed this very, very briefly in some of our rollout events. I wanted to go through some examples of them, show it live. And then finally, the fully defined sketch command. It does exactly what it says. If you've got a tricky sketch and it's hard to fully define, uh, you can definitely use this command. And as you'll see, it may not give us the dimensions exactly where we would like them to be, but it does allow us to fully define the sketch, and then we could go ahead and clean them up after the fact. So back over into SOLIDWORKS here. Um, let's bring up another model. I'm just using the, the, uh, the little SOLIDWORKS home recent. I have it mapped to the R key, which is, I think, a default hotkey recent documents. And if you weren't aware, you can take files that you've been opening and just pin them to keep them uh, consistently available inside of SOLIDWORKS. It really makes it easy to jump around and you can pin files and folders and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and bring up this example right here. And I have created a reference plane just for the you know, sake of time. Um, I'm going to put a sketch on that plane. And now what I want to find out is where this plane intersects various model faces. And the way to do that is a command called intersection curve kind of hiding under convert entities right there. Doesn't have much of a user interface. Um, there's no need to select reference plane number two because I'm currently editing a sketch. If I was not editing a sketch, I could select plane number two and any additional faces, say okay, and wherever that plane slices the model, I will have sketch geometry. Now there's a couple of entities I don't need, maybe the side on the right, the side down below. But there we can see some nice sketch geometry to work with. And I just want to see what that angle is. So I'll shortcut key over to my dimension command, select a line, and you can see a dimension cannot be created from the selected items. Notice the cursor feedback to the immediate right of my mouse arrow. It's a spline. It's not actually a line, even though it looks linear. So how can we calculate or how can we represent an angular dimension up there? Well, this is where we can select three points, and those three points can be used to create a, an angle dimension. So if we click point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, we do get an angle dimension, but it's a pretty strange angle dimension. You can see the first selection, that's, that's the vertex of the angle dimension, so the order 
uh, it is important. So I'm just going to hit escape here a few times, and then we'll start with the vertex, and then click two and click three, and that's a little bit more of what I was expecting. So there we can see it's you know 94.91. It's a fully defined sketch, so we can make it reference, and we can see again select those three points, start with the selection to represent the vertex, clicks two and three. That's another way to get a nice angular dimension if you don't have nice linear geometry to work with. So let's talk about splitting entities, a uh, really important kind of topic inside of your SOLIDWORKS uh, sketches, especially when you, you start to create geometry like this. It's super simple. We've got one sketch that's uh, you know a half circle of hemisphere over to a rectangle. But the thing that I want to point out here is the, the number of segments in each sketch con contour are not the same. The rectangle has four segments and the hemisphere has two segments and lofts tend to uh, get a bit confused and tend to twist and create unfortunate geometry like we have up on the screen here. Now this is applicable even if you're not creating lofts, this splitting of sketch entities. So I'll go ahead and I'll edit the sketch. We'll flip it around normal two, and I'm just going to right click on the circle. And this one's kind of hidden. They've moved it around over the last few releases. Under sketch tools, there is a command called split entities. Um, very, very useful command. But I don't actually have it on my shortcut toolbar. So I'm going to add it here with a right click customize. Let's go into sketch. And there it is right there, split entities, drag and drop. So a little bit of uh, side information on how to customize your shortcut toolbar. There's that split entities. And what's really nice about this is anywhere you click, whether it's circles, lines, splines, whatever the case is, uh, the internal continuity of the geometry is the same. So in this case, the arcs are all co-radial with one another. And these are entity points just like anything. I can drag them around. I could add relationships between them, just holding down the control key, making them horizontal. And now I've got one, two, three, and four segments in the half circle and four segments in the rectangle. And now the surfaces all line up and everything works exactly as expected. So this uh, split entities, that's definitely one of those that can uh, can help you out from time to time. Replacing entities. Is there an unsplit? In some cases, there, there is. Um, let me show you two ways to do that here, some, some bonus information. Now, if the sketch has the same continuity in it, you can actually take these points and delete them. So for arcs, it works. Um, for lines, they, they need to be emerged and collinear. So there are a couple of very specific scenarios. Now the other way that you can quote unquote unsplit is to use another quite useful command called a fit spline. I'm just going to use command search to find it. So the fit spline operation. And what this will do is it will blend a spline through the geometry, maintaining the underlying simple, simplified, you know, analytic arc geometry. And there's options to have it open and closed, and there's an appropriate tolerance in there. So this is another technique that you'll see used quite a bit in SOLIDWORKS to, air quote, unsplit the geometry, kind of blend it back together. Now, I'm not going to use that here because it will break my feature. But again, fit splines, even though I don't have a good example to show it here, write this one down. It can be a really, really useful function, especially when you need to remove edges on a model in uh, you know, kind of surface modeling examples, things like that. Very, very useful command. So the replace entity, uh, like I said, this has been around in SOLIDWORKS for, for quite a while. Um, but with that said, I t personally tend to get in a hurry and forget about it. So we can see here's the sketch. 
It's not a overly complex sketch, but for some silly reason on our two plug power strip, we would like to take this plane or excuse me, this line and replace it with an arc. Well, this is a fully defined sketch. It's the base sketch for the base feature. There are a handful of features downstream that depend on it. So if we simply take this line and we delete it and we ignore that window and simply say yes, and then we replace everything with something like a three-point arc, um, well, you can probably all guess that when I hit the green check mark, or I guess in this case, um, the confirmation corner, or since I mentioned the D key, let's actually use it in this presentation. So I just hit the D key to bring the uh, confirmation corner to the mouse. Very, very bad things are going to happen in my model. So we're going to say continue and ignore the error. And sure enough, everything fails. I've got blown up edges for my chamfers. I've got failed cuts. This honestly was to be expected. Uh, you blow away geometry in your base sketch. There's no way to get around it. Bad, bad features, bad, bad rebuilds are going to happen. So we're going to leverage some undo, some control Z. We're going to bring everything back to where um, the model is appropriate. And we're going to try this using that replace. Now replace again, it's there, it's been there for a while, but a lot of times we forget about some of these commands. So you can get to that replace with two or two different ways primarily. Now select on an entity in the pop-up toolbar, there is replace entity. Uh, it is one entity at a time, so be aware of that. Uh, it also is available when I selected delete. What tends to happen right here is like a lot of commands, it has the do not ask again, and we will say yes to delete it anyway, do not ask again, and we never see this replace entity option you know, ever again. <laughs> it gets logged away into the dismissed messages area of the SOLIDWORKS options. So we're going to replace the entity, but in order to do that, I need to create that entity first. So we'll temporarily cancel, shortcut toolbar over to my arcs. Let's just create that three-point arc, and we'll draw that arc in there. So again, select the line, hit delete, replace the entity, and switch over to the arc. Now, with this arc, we have some options. We can either delete it or we can make it construction. Now making it construction can kind of be conceived as cheating. Um, so I'm actually going to delete it. I'm going to say OK. And the dimension is gone. My sketch is underdefined. But if I hit the D key to rebuild, say OK, not one feature fails. So again, the software will remap all of the references. So that's a very good thing. Unfortunately, it is one entity at a time, but you can replace entity after entity after entity in a sketch. It just might take you a couple of, uh, a couple of cycles, um, but much faster than blowing the model up and fixing everything. So that is the replace entity. And last but not least, I want to talk about uh, Power trim. Now I'm not going to go into the power trim command, but I will be using power trim here. That is under trim entities and power trim. What I want to mention are these little check boxes right here. Uh, if you've been to any of our uh, De design innovation summit, our, our 2020 what's new in 2020 rollouts, we went through a, a real brief overview of some top 10 releases or top 10 enhancements for the last 10 years. These two options were released in SOLIDWORKS 2019, and I don't believe any of us really understood them or even noticed they were in there, but these are really, really cool. Um, keep trimmed entities as construction geometry. So typically, power trim, click and drag, the entities are deleted. That's how SOLIDWORKS has been since I've ever used it. But again, I'll control Z to undo. I'll go back into trim entities, and now I'm going to turn on the keep trimmed entities as construction. And you can see what the software is doing. Now there's a lot going on on the screen with my relationship callouts, um, but that's important because SOLIDWORKS is maintaining all that internal continuity. I'm sure we've all seen a sketch that as we trim it, well, 
relations are deleted, sometimes the sketch goes sideways. This will keep everything intact. So uh, they, they introduced this in SOLIDWORKS 2019, super, super useful. And you can also see this is kind of on by default now in ignore trimming of construction geometry. So another, another really nice option. This is one of those that completely flew under the radar. We didn't even talk about it in our rollouts last year, but we thought we would bring it up in our rollouts this year because sometimes there's some great functionality that unfortunately we miss it. So again, keep trimmed entities as construction geometry. So short and sweet, trying to keep things right around the 30 minute mark so I can use everybody's time wisely. But if anybody has any questions, please send them in to me. I am more than happy to get to them. Uh, if you have some sketch tips that you like to use, some funky workarounds for the lack of a better way to describe it, just some interesting techniques you've come up as a SOLIDWORKS user, you know, and you want to share them, go ahead and send them in. We'd love to see them. Everybody uses SOLIDWORKS differently out there, so it's always good to uh, share that information. And with all of that said, I will say thank you very much. Enjoy your day. Enjoy the rest of your day.